All right, let's try this. Say it three times, and it's supposed to appear in front of you. Beetle juice, beetle juice, beetle juice. And there you have it. We now have our first major discovery in the last few years. A discovery that potentially explains everything about Beetlejuice in the last six years and basically solves most of its mysteries. And as the title of this video suggests, we are now almost certain it seems to have a partner. A tiny barely visible companion that was finally officially discovered just a few hours ago from when I'm making this video. And so let's discuss this relatively major discovery in a bit more detail. But first, let's briefly review some of the mysteries from 2019-2020, because it's important to understand why this new discovery potentially resolves everything. And this is of course in regards to the most iconic star in the night skies, the mighty Beetlejuice. The enormous object visible in the constellation of Orion that represents the tenth brightest star in the night skies, because it's enormous in size. It's approximately 760 times the size of our sun, making it up to 87,000 times as bright. But a few years ago, something bizarre started happening to this star when it suddenly decided to pull a dramatic disappearing act, or I guess technically a dimming act. This was referred to as the Great Dimming Event of 2019. And I think this image kind of illustrates why this was so bizarre. It basically dropped by approximately 30% in brightness, and at first, it was not clear why. As a matter of fact, this was so bizarre and so sudden that a lot of different publications started to report this as a potential inevitable supernova event. This would be an extremely bright event if it actually happened. But nothing happened in 2019, nothing happened in 2020, 2021, and so on. And people kept waiting and waiting and wondering if it was going to do anything. Turns out it wasn't going to do anything at all because this was just a kind of a massive burp as a lot of dust got ejected from the star itself, temporarily obscuring its light. This image from NASA demonstrates to us what it potentially looked like. And at first I guess we could say that, well, mystery solved, right? Well, not so fast. Here we had a much deeper enigma surrounding this red supergiant and surrounding its other bizarre properties, specifically why does its brightness change in such a peculiar long-term cycle and what exactly is happening around it in order to produce such bizarre dust emissions? And it looks like we finally have a definitive answer. Something that has been speculated a couple of years back and something you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. But it looks like astronomers have just announced we have a direct detection of a long-predicted, incredibly elusive companion in a very tight orbit around Betelgeuse. And specifically, a companion star that seems to orbit in such a way that once in a while it causes certain effects on Betelgeuse, including dimming effects, and of course including sudden emissions of dust, with the most extreme example observed in 2019. And by itself this is a monumental achievement. Mostly because it was always believed to be basically impossible since Beetlejuice is so ridiculously bright. With this new discovery not just helping us see Beetlejuice better, but also giving us a little bit more information about its fate and of course about what's going to happen to the star system in a few million years. And so let's discuss the details starting with the star itself. So don't forget this is a red supergiant. One of the largest and one of the brightest stars visible from Earth and also the closest red supergiant to the solar system. But because it's already close to 760 times the size of our Sun, it suggests that it's already in its late stages. Here's roughly how it compares to other famous stars, including the slightly brighter Rigel and of course the Sun. But in terms of the actual age, it is pretty young, approximately 10 million years old. But for massive stars this is really old. And that's because massive stars burn through their nuclear fuel much, much quicker, and so they generally don't live that much and go supernova after just a few million years. In this case, we actually expect the star to go supernova within approximately 1 million years from today. But despite of this, because the star is so famous and because it's been observed for millennia, we naturally learn quite a lot about it over the years. And while we know that it does change its brightness over time, now variability in stars is pretty common, so this is not something unusual, but in case of Betelgeuse, it seems to have at least several periods. Its main period is approximately 400 days long. And you can actually see these deviations and these changes in brightness in the graph right here. And this fluctuation is quite well understood. It seems to be caused by internal pulsations within the star, in a sense similar to a kind of a giant cosmic heart. 
This is actually pretty common for these large stars and usually happens as a result of a lot of circulation of stuff inside the star. But this star also seems to have a secondary, more extended period lasting approximately six years. And it's actually this longer cycle that was much more difficult to explain, especially because it does not make sense in terms of internal stellar dynamics. And so because of this six-year variability that didn't seem to fit other models, some researchers proposed that, well, maybe there's actually something in orbit. Especially because the bizarre dip in 2019 seemed to match these bizarre six-year period predictions and could technically be explained by something in the orbit approaching Betelgeuse really close every six years. And so here, by digging into decades of archival data and by renewing various propositions and a lot of additional observations, researchers propose that there's a very high chance that there is actually a hidden companion, with at least two separate papers in 2024 making this somewhat interesting proposition. I believe I've discussed them in some of the previous videos in the description. But these were just predictions and there was no direct observation. As a matter of fact, one of the studies even suggested that it would be super difficult to actually find this evidence just because the star is so ridiculously bright. And on top of this, previous instruments and previous observations did try to discover this hypothetical companion by using certain frequencies. For example, the Hubble Space Telescope and the Chandra X-ray Observatory have searched for this before, but found absolutely nothing. And so up until this point, there was just no evidence for anything here, with that somewhat strange emission of dust in 2019 basically remaining kind of mysterious. Yet here we are in July of 2025 and looks like we have our first evidence. How'd they do it? What exactly was done differently and how did the scientists finally able to find something? And this really shows you how far we've come now in terms of observing these really really dim objects or in terms of finding new strategies and new types of analysis in order to discover something that would be otherwise invisible. Here, the team led by Steve Howell, a senior research scientist at NASA, finally managed to succeed where everyone failed. They used a special instrument called Alopaki. I believe it means fox in Hawaiian. And the instrument that's mounted on the Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii was key to their success. Because in this case, they used a very clever technique referred to as speckle imaging that helped the researchers to remove extra light from Betelgeuse in order to finally discover this super dim companion. In essence, it kind of works like this. Since Earth's atmosphere is constantly distorting the light from distant stars, making them twinkle and blur, speckle imaging can overcome all of this by using extremely short exposure times, here we're talking about millisecond exposure times, to essentially freeze out atmospheric distortions, creating a kind of a snapshot of the star. And so by taking many, many such exposures, and then by using algorithms to combine all of them, in essence, this can completely remove blurring effect while also achieving incredibly high angular resolution. And by combining the high resolution capability of Alopeki with very high light gathering power of Gemini North's 8.1 meter mirror, this allowed researchers to push the limits of the telescope and reveal something previously invisible. It essentially revealed something super, super dim right next to Betelgeuse in exactly the same location where previous studies predicted it to be. Although here, there's a really important side note. Right now, at the moment of the discovery, the confidence level for this detection is only 1.5 sigma. In science, we usually need to have at least 5 sigma in order for this to be definitive and in order for this not to be some kind of a statistical error. But since in this case, the observation seems to match directly predictions from previous papers, including the location and even the timing of the orbit, technically this 1.5 sigma is actually enough to almost certainly say there is definitely something here. And in this case, this was from December 9th of 2024, which is exactly when some of the studies predicted this object to be visible. Which means that, at least for now, we can assume that this is real. And so let me introduce you to this new Betelgeuse's companion. Right now researchers decided to call it Siwarha, which is technically a play on words. In Arabic, Betelgeuse literally means the hand of giantess. And it just so happens that Siwarha in Arabic means her bracelet. So basically here we have a bracelet on the hand of a female giant. And I think it's a pretty fitting name. But what do we know about this object and what can be seen so far? Well, first of all, obviously this is much, much fainter than Betelgeuse. In terms of magnitudes, at least six magnitudes fainter. That's a huge difference in brightness. And based on this, we can actually estimate its mass and even its type. 
In terms of mass, this object seems to be 1.5 to maybe 1.6 times the Sun, orbiting approximately 4 astronomical units away from Betelgeuse itself, or about 4 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. And that means that Siwarha orbits much closer than Jupiter, taking almost 6 years to do one orbit. But right now it's also believed that this is technically not a star yet. It's a pre-main sequence star, or a hot young blue-white star, that has not ignited stable hydrogen fusion in its core yet, and is still technically a stellar baby. But when it does ignite, it's going to be an F-type star, brighter and more massive than the Sun. But what's super strange here is of course the orbit itself. Siwarha isn't just orbiting close by, it seems to be orbiting well within Betelgeuse's outer extended atmosphere, basically swimming through some of the outer layers, and thus once in a while causing some of these layers to escape, producing something similar to what we saw in 2019. And so if this is confirmed in the next few years, this is the first time ever we've seen any stellar companion so close to the parent supergiant star. And that surely would explain pretty much everything about Betelgeuse that's been bugging astronomers for many decades. It would explain its bizarre six year period, it would explain the dimming effect in 2019, but would also help us explain exactly what's going to happen to Betelgeuse in the next million years, and of course what's going to happen to this star once Betelgeuse becomes a neutron star or a black hole. And that's because if this star is real, the gravitational interactions very likely cause the material between these stars to constantly exchange, with Siwarha influencing Betelgeuse's interior, and Betelgeuse affecting Siwarha's evolution, and possibly changing the star itself as it eventually becomes main sequence. And this discovery can also help us understand other similar stars as well, because several red supergiants have also been seen with these unusual periodic changes, with many lasting several years. Although here I guess there is something else kind of intriguing. Mostly because Betelgeuse, as you probably know, is almost finished being a star. Its main sequence stage is nearly over. But its partner has not started yet, and so because it's much less massive, it's still waiting for its chance to kickstart hydrogen burning and to become a real star in the next 2 million years. But that's actually the next question. If this star is real, and if it orbits so close to Betelgeuse, when Betelgeuse goes supernova, or even before Betelgeuse goes supernova, there's a very high chance that the tidal forces from Betelgeuse may cause Siwarha to completely fall apart, or to possibly even spiral inwards, combining with Betelgeuse in the next 10,000 years. So in other words, we now have a new mystery. What exactly will happen to this companion in the next 10,000 years, and how will this affect Betelgeuse? And of course, will the star survive? And so right now we obviously have no answers for this yet, and we probably will not have answers until late 2027. And that's because the next opportunity to observe Siwarha is going to be in November of 2027. That's when it's going to be in just the right location around Betelgeuse, when it's going to be possible to use the technique once again in order to detect this object and in order to analyze it a little bit better. As a matter of fact, at this point it's going to have its further separation from Betelgeuse, so it's going to be much much easier to see it. And so this new discovery and this new technique technically opens up a lot of new doors for studying these bizarre stars, and for finding even more hidden companions around other very bright massive stars. And so quite an exciting confirmation of a somewhat old hypothesis, something that a lot of previous observations failed to achieve, and something that has now been done using this brilliant technique. But at least for now that's kind of all we know. Once there are some additional confirmations or something else is discovered about Betelgeuse, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few other things, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.